This group brings together cars with a certain kind of credibility, a retro, authentic credibility, burnished with a certain celebrity and a certain authenticity. If you're the kind that's never been seen in anything but an old work shirt and a pair of skinny jeans, then this class is for you. It's Forza for hipsters. Of course, what could be more hip than the original hot hatch, the Volkswagen Rabbit GTI, or as the rest of the world calls it, the Golf. Or for that matter, the Datsun 510, the appealing little Nissan that began to spread the word that Japanese cars were really rather good and possessed a quality undiscovered elsewhere on the planet. Reliability. Lastly, and only a hipster would ever love this one, there is a VW Beetle. Here's a simply huge group of cars. This will take you some time, and it will give you some considerable pleasure. You will know all these cars, cars you may well have actually driven, or, if you're too young to drive, cars you will soon be lusting after. I guarantee that. From early super hatches like the Ford Focus RS to the mini John Cooper works, they fall into two groups, fast and really very fast indeed. Finally, there's the Volkswagen Scirocco. VW doesn't like to call it a hatch, but nor is it a coupe either. Still, it would be such a shame to leave it out. Especially as I wrote rather a nice song about the diesel version. I could sing it for you if you like. Here's a little test for you. A bunch of cars with all sorts of different ways of getting you from A to B quickly. Front wheel drive. That's the way the car business prefers to make its cars. Rear wheel drive. That's the way you and I would prefer the car business to make cars. Mid-engined and rear wheel drive, which is the way Lamborghini makes cars. And four wheel drive, which I'm not sure is the way anyone really wants to make cars, except when it's snowy, of course, which for most of us isn't very often. Four-wheel drive cars are easy and safe. If you drive too fast, they won't spin, usually. But they don't go sideways either, usually. Rear-wheel drive cars will go sideways. It's relatively simple and safe to do so without spinning, relatively. Try them all and tell me I'm wrong. There are many ways to go very fast around a track like ours. You can choose four-wheel drive or rear drive, mid-engined or front-engined, great big V12 or little V8 with a turbocharger. All those options are here in this group. There are two super Mercedes here, the SLR and the SLS, and the car Clarkson says is the best car he's ever driven, probably in the world, the Lexus LFA. But if there is one standout car in this group, it surely has to be the McLaren F1. The only car here where you sit in the middle. The only car made of real gold. The only car that will still silence any group of men as it drives by. This group demonstrates what engineers can do when they're allowed to go completely mad. There's nothing here you should not experience at least once. Just about every kind and configuration is here. Some have their engines in the middle, some at the front, some have rear drive, some send their horsepower to all four corners. All, however, do have one thing in common. They all look as fast as they're supposed to be. Some people say that the Pagani and the Koenigsegg Agera are racing cars with stereos, but that isn't necessarily so. Road cars may be more powerful than racers, but they're often softer and kinder and squidgier. Be in no doubt, this is a very good place to spend rather more time than you should. There are many, many things a road car must do that a race car need not. It needs to keep its driver comfortable and cool, and ideally in an environment in which it's not only possible to listen to the radio, but to hold a conversation as well. It must be able to give its driver every possible opportunity to avoid an accident, and when he runs out of talent and luck, protect him like a mummy polar bear protects her cub. Now, imagine if you could strip out all of those requirements. And that brings us to this, the Ferrari 458 Italia and the latest racing Viper. Very different, but both viciously effective. Here 
are some Le Mans cars, most of them winners, not one of them what you would expect. The 2012 Audi R18 e-tron Quattro, a four-wheel drive hybrid, is possibly the most complicated car to win Le Mans yet. Peugeot's first diesel, the twin-turbo V12 908, secured victory over Audi at Le Mans on its third attempt. This car, the number nine, was the winner. Lastly, a bit of a throwback, and it's not actually a Le Mans winner. But the Ferrari 333 SP is here because, well, it's a racing Ferrari with a V12.